Hopefully everybody joins us for this interview tonight. I know it's Friday night, but you guys don't want to miss this. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Renee Adams Show and Empowerment Week. Please do not forget to like, share, and comment. I can see your comments right on the screen. So if you guys have any questions or comments or anything for Bashir or the show in general, please leave the comments. Um, we'll answer the questions after the show if you have anything. And also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please inbox me. We can talk about if you have a, a story or a product or service that you would like to promote. We can talk about that. But anywho, today my guest is London. Is Today my guest is by Sheer Hogue. And he is a London Music Stellar Award winning and anointed singer and songwriter, new BBC UK Recording Music Groups, LLC recording artist and I'm so excited to have you here on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Although I thought you were from London. That was like, okay. so, Not yeah. at all. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> so welcome to the show. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Um I'm doing pretty well. I can't complain. Uh yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Can't complain at all. Under the circumstances, right? Yeah. How is it yeah. there? With, I'm sorry? How is it there with the pandemic and everything? Uh, it's like, uh, um, it's sort of like everywhere else. It's just, you know, everyone's just taking extra precaution and, um, people staying home, you know, um, well, from what I know, uh, but you know, it's, it's just, just coping with the new norm. Cause I, I just mm -hmm. got to feel this is going to be the new norm for, for a while. For a while. Yeah, yeah, me too. Cause it's steady growing and everything yep. like that. So I'm, I'm sure we'll be in this for a while too. So. Absolutely. We all just need to take that precaution and be safe, no matter what we feel or think about it, because some people just think it's over-exaggerated, but I still yeah. think that we should um, take the precaution. Right. Yeah. So anyway, the, so people who do not know who by sheer Hogue is, if you can kind of just go into your backstory a little bit and uh, your journey into music. Okay. Um, well, again, my name is Bashir Hogue, um, and I am a native from Philadelphia. And I actually started in church. Michelle, call me. <laughs> I am actually, you know, still in church. Um, but I started in church um, singing on the choir. You know, my okay. mom introduced me um, to a, um, a director. Her name was Tawana Tawan Lane. Um, and she said, you know, can my son sing? On a choir, and I started there. And she gave me my first solo, which was Trouble Don't Last Always by Reverend Timothy Wright. Mm -hmm. From there, you know, they was like, wow, he can sing. Because okay. you know? um, it was like an adult song that I was singing. Um, so I started there, and from there, I just started singing, you know, regularly, um, you know, praise and worship at church and um, on the choir, and then helping people out when it, when, it come, when it came to music and different things like that. And just uh, more so got into school. Um, and I did that and, you know, just did some plays and, you know, uh, <laughs> did some work concerts and just sung for a lot of churches and a lot of pastors. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So, that's, so that's, were that's, you like passionate about it or was it something that was kind of, do you feel like it was pushed on you? But then you found out like I can sing. Um, it wasn't. Uh, did I find out was it pushed on me? No, um, it wasn't pushed on me. Um, it was something I, I wanted to do because when I saw Michael Jackson do the moonwalk, oh, um, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I saw that and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was my brothers and sister. So I, I was like, oh, I want to do that. My mom said, like, you must be crazy. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. but she still was like, okay, well, if you want to do that, you know, mm -hmm. you got to practice like he practiced, you know, um, and do what he did. And so every day I was in the room just um, holding up like perfume bottles saying, okay, here, here come by here. <sighs> and I oh was my like, God, <laughs> you said the perfume bottle. So you just went to your mom's <laughs> dresser. Yeah. They were, they were, the, the perfume bottles and lotion bottles were my audience. Oh so. my goodness. I've never heard of that before. That is so funny. <laughs> you got to make it happen. Like you totally have to make it happen though. Yes. yes you yes. know, well, you have to have your audience, even though they're like not giving you any kind of like <laughs> or anything. <laughs> I mean, that's true. That's true. So so funny. So, like, how would you compare your music? Do you sing R and B as well as gospel? Like, how do you how do you define your your style? Um. Well, I I was singing gospel as a profession. Um. But then I'm transfer I transferred over to 
um, R and B genre. So okay. I have a new single coming out. Well, I have a new single that's out called "Love You Back," um, and uh, following that's an album called "Love Factor." So I'm a silent, and that's all R and B. So yeah. um, my, my I heard the song um, "Love You Back," and that's what I was. That's that's where the question came from. It's like, well, is he R and B? Is he gospel? Did he transition? When did the transition happen? So yeah, I did hear the song, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Prince. Yeah, everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good compliment. <laughs> it is very much so. Absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, how did that transition happen for you, and why did it happen for you? Um, well, because it was told to me that I could never do it you know, um, when I was younger and not by my parents, but by people in the church, because, you know, I, I grew up around a strict background. So they were like, R&B, that's the devil's music, you know? Oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when I came to, to the realization that Christians listen to R&B okay. um, and, and they do other stuff other than church, I said, hold up, this some something ain't right. Mm -hmm. Then I started looking into some other stuff. I said, wait a minute. I said, I'm not going to hell for the one yeah, <laughs> or yeah. because it's a job. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, it transitioned because I knew I, I, I knew I can do it hidden, meaning like I was secretly doing it. But then I, um, when I started doing it, people heard it and they was like, yo, do this because it's mm -hmm. working for you. And I, you know, that's where the song came at. Yeah. And sometimes we have to be like that, even though our we were raised with certain beliefs. Right. Oh, you know, in a, you know, religious household, sometimes we kind of grow up and we, we, you know, transition into what we feel we should do for, for us, like what would be good for us, like with my best interest. And I think sometimes it's just about awareness. Right. And knowing, like, I don't think I'll be, you know, like cursed for, you know, singing in a different genre of music, no. you know, and I think that was kind of, um, you know, a, like a maturity level for you yes. in a way, you know, just to be like, well, I'm breaking out of that. I want to try something new. Yeah. I mean, although that's like my heart and my roots and everything for me, I feel like this is the path that I want to, I want to try. And now you see that you're great at it. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's working. It's working for me. Um, I'm going to say this. And I said it before on another interview that I've, um, I tell people that the gospel Music industry is no different than the um, R&B um, when it comes to business, because it's business. However, when it comes to the genres, um, we, because it's separated and people like to kind of say, well, because uh, now they have gospel R&B. Right. So it's kind of right. like, yeah. you know, it's kind of like they putting it together because now people are noticing, OK, you can still have a contemporary gospel song and still love God. You know, so, <clears throat> you know, right now it's, it's just the world's changing in a whole different way in reference to receiving music and how music should be received. Yeah, so. yeah, and let's talk about that a little bit as far as like how you see music changing. Like, what have you noticed? And I mean, to your business and what you're trying to grow into, like, what was, what's some of the important moves that you've seen? And I mean, and has it affected you at all? Um. So first, the um, how has it changed? Yeah. Um, I would say that it changed in a way. Now, um, the music we listen to today is no, it's nothing like Luther Vandross. It's nothing like, you know, uh, Anita Baker. It's nothing like, you know, you have your Tony Brasses. It's nothing like, you know, um, basically, you know, Al Jarreau. You don't have those anymore uh, where they sung clean music and you understood it. And basically it was more so like, baby, take me back. That was the kind of music we list, I, I grew up on. So today you hear like, I just want to freak you and that's it. So it, it changed in a way where everything's like fast right now. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, getting, excuse my expression, the skins is fast, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. having the girls fast, you know, having the goals, everything is fast. So, and it's like nobody's slowing down and say, hey, listen, I messed up. Can you take me back? This is what I did. So the wow. music has, cha has changed in that way. And it's, it's kind of it's kind of headed to a danger zone if we don't save it. You know, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. changed a lot. No, that's a good point, though. And oh my god, because that it's the music is what is programming people. Absolutely, you know, to think and feel and act the way that they do, and yep. it's not real. It's you know, when it comes to like what you said, like everything is moving so fast, and yeah. try to apologize, and it's like moving on to the next, and mm -hmm. it really is unhealthy to be. In that mindset to just yes. be thinking, I okay, she did that or he did that, I'm moving on. 
you yep. know, instead of giving someone a chance because friendships can last, you know, much longer than just a day. Absolutely. And it can provide so much more in your life if you just right. get to know people and build, take the time to build those relationships, whether or not it's, it leads into an intimate relationship or not. Um, I know this is kind of taking it off a little bit off the beaten path, but I mean, no I problem. like that you said that because you know, I mean, a lot of people need to understand that the music and the media and everything is programming you, and yeah. it, it's hard to be authentic. It's hard to be. Wow. Right. It's hard to be authentic when you're you're following with the media and the media is it, it's going. It, it's like it, it's a transmission to the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. So you could if you could actually, you know, set yourself apart from that. And sometimes it's not always the the easiest path to go. But at least you feel comfortable knowing that you're living in your truth. Yes, absolutely. You know, so, and, you know, the music that you're making is great, right? We, I can relate to that. Like, I can relate to that. But the, some of the music that if, if, you, if you train yourself to listen to all the time, it's training your mind. It, it's training your, 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 um, your, your, so, your consciousness right. and, where you're following things that you don't, you're not even aware that you're following. Absolutely. Yep. You're absolutely correct. So, I mean, I know you started out at an early age, 11 years old, working with various artists. Like, how did that how, how did that all happen for you to start working with all these like high end, you know, artists and stuff like that? Uh, it first started off when um, it was more so it was more so how I connected with people. Okay. Uh, so this person knew that person. So, you know, the first the first thing I did was with. Um, well, I did a lot. So, but the thing is, um, it's like, for instance, when I sung for Bill Clinton, that was through somebody I knew. Then I, when I sung for, uh, sung for Kimberell, that was through somebody I knew. So everything that I did in reference to knowing people and singing with people and working with the people that I work with, I knew someone who knew them. Wow. So it was like, Hey, let me put you to them or direct okay. you to them because they're going to like what you do okay. and they did so that's how that happened it was it wasn't like you know hey listen i'm not sure like, hey, right you know, yeah. yeah you it don't have like, to do that <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that but you also worked with um kelly price and who are some other like big names that you work with um uh, Kim Allen Sledge, she's from the Sledge, the Sledge Sisters. Yes. Um, I work with her. Um, Richard Smallwood. Um, who else? It's uh, some other people I work with. It's um, hard to like. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not. It's not a problem. Um, I work. With, I work with a lot of people. Uh, I guess I'm trying to remember. Like I, I should know it. Um, but I, I've I've did some things uh, with um, Andre Bashelli. Oh um, yes! Oh yes! Yes, yeah. yes! Yes! I love him. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Yes, that. I mean, how was that? Like, that's a totally different kind of blend and yeah. music. Um, how did you guys do that? <laughs> um, well, it was it was difficult for me because, to be honest with you, I didn't know who he was until I met him, and this is a real long time ago. I was like twenty, and um, I didn't know he. I know I didn't know who he was, so I didn't know he was like blind and you know i'm walking up to him you know because they said you're gonna because i was in a program where you can actually go where they put you in it was a music program where they can put you in certain places to sing with other people okay and um it was a part of a city year it's like a city year um thing and what we did was they appointed certain people to go sing for people at certain events and he was one of them that i sung with um and for oh. and um, I'm shaking his hand like, uh, and it's like he's blind. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so yeah. it it was, but just to have that type of exposure, it changed my life because I said, hold up, this other music genres than just what I am stuck to. Mm -hmm. and, and so I said, let me explore different opportunities because you know he's definitely into international. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like singing with someone international. That was great, and wow. I said, I put this in my resume. So yeah, that's that, it was great. It that's was great. awesome. Oh my god! Like I did see that too on on your in your bio, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. That would be interesting to, to talk about. Yeah, because uh, he's he's saying with uh, Celine Dion. Yep. Oh god. Yeah. It's like I played that song over and over again with them two together. I forget the name of it, but. I think it's yeah. the prayer. I think it's the yes, prayer. Yes, that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That was my favorite, favorite song by them too. So yeah. 
Yeah, but also not only are you doing music, but you also tapped into like writing and producing plays. Yes, I did. Um, <clears throat> that was um, actually inspired by um, the late uh, Charles Miller. Miller, and um, he he started writing plays and. Um, from just the um, um, results that he got from writing plays and people that came out. I mean, he when he did plays here um, in Philly, um, and I was a part of it, people always came out. And I said, well, I want to do this. Okay. So he said, just write a play. And I was like, I can't just write a play. So I started writing a play. And he helped me, you know, wow. do the play. And it was successful. And I said, okay, I'm going to start writing more plays. So that's how I started writing plays through him, you know, because he, he was the inspiration for it. Yeah, Are you working on another one now? Yeah, everybody asks me that. <laughs> but, you know what? I'm, but you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this because this is confirmation because I just told mm -hmm. someone that I'm going to start writing plays. And yeah. It was like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to work on one so we can get this thing rolling. <laughs> okay, hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, one was successful and you got, you got guidance on that one. Yes. So, you know, I think you definitely should put, you know, keep your hand in it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, it was successful and everything like that. So how would you say that the industry is treating you, especially knowing that you transitioned um, from gospel Ooh. to R&B? <laughs> um, the industry? Well, I would say on the side of R&B genre, they're treating me well, surprisingly. Okay. Um, within the gospel genre, it's they, they, they didn't know. Because when I when I dropped uh, when I dropped um, "Love You Back," <laughs> right, especially my mom because she didn't know. Um, I didn't tell anybody because usually I'm usually telling people, like, "Hey, this is what I'm gonna do." Yeah. I didn't tell nobody. Mm. So when I dropped it, my mom was like, "What's that?" I said, "Army." She said, "Oh, I know what it is." You know. Oh. So there, there were people from the ch not my church but different churches that they was trying they was trying to get used. To they was trying to get like a feel. They liked it because they didn't know it was me. So okay. when I said this is me, there's like, no, it's not. I said it's me. That's like, so you doing R and B now? I said, yeah. <laughs> right, they can't say anything now because it's out. It's out, right? It's so out. now you can be like, yeah, that's me. You know, <laughs> it's out. But yes. surprisingly, uh, they like it. And they surprisingly, like it. I'm being accepted by a lot of people in the industry. I'm, 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 I'm blown away by the um, acceptance. Right. In this kind of, job. I don't, I, I, I never. I'm gonna say I've never been at this level, or I've never been at this okay. top, never. So oh. if for me to experience it, it's it's like wow, this is this is great. However, I got my eyes open because it's oh, a lot, good. Of it, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's 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 great. Yeah. It's yeah, because I was going to ask you like from like gospel and R and B, like who like who wants to keep you where? Like, do they want to keep you in gospel or do they want to keep you in R and B? Like, where do they like you the most? Do you think R and B? Definitely, or do you, um, is it like 50 50? It's 50 50 because it's a pull, it's a pull, you know, <laughs> right? It's a, pull. Exactly. Yes, it's a pull, but the, the more the, the one that's winning the most is RB. Be honest with you, I'm good for you. Well, you made a good decision. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, do you feel like you're facing any challenges? Um, in reference to what, as in reference as to just the um, the RB industry. Um, but ch any challenges, struggles, anything like that, or is it just effortless for you? Right now, it's effortless because uh, because of the pandemic. When everything opens back up, hopefully, and I start performing, because they have those they uh, they they're setting those up um, as we speak um, potentially. Um, and that may be the test because it's like now I'm going before the people, right? And different type of people to actually sing. You know, love you back, and you know, not gospel. Mm -hmm. It's just you know, so that's different. You know, so I, I that test is coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you'll pass. You'll be fine. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you will. So, is there anything that anything like projects that you would like to share? Any other information about you that you would like to share before we end the broadcast? Um, just uh, I um, just there's just the album. The album's coming out. Um. And um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about that. It's called um, "Love a uh, Love Factor" um, song of Solomon. You're gonna hear a lot of Solomon's life. With, with how really what it is is just that Solomon's Solomon is brought up to this day, 
and he's going to experience everything in 2020. So you'll hear that within the music. Um, okay. But it definitely be R&B. And um, I, I have a lot. To, uh, I have um, T.W. Sucks to thank, um, Will Artore, Ron Hall to thank. They're the producers. Well, um, Ron, uh, Will Artore and Ron, Ron Hall. They're the actual producers for the um, Love You Back and the actual um, um, album. But yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And Michelle, okay. thank you. You know, and, Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Yes. Um, so I'm so glad that we had this chat. Yes, I think you shared a lot of great information today. Yes. So thank you so much for being on the show. And I'll just leave off by saying if anybody wants to be on the Renee Adams show, please inbox me. Also um, follow by Sheer Hogue on his Instagram and um, Facebook handles as well. Uh, I mean, he has great music, YouTube. Check that out. You know, the yes. Love Me Back single that he has out. I like it. I think you guys will too. So check him out. And thank you again, Bashir, for being on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me. Um, and everybody have a great Friday and a great weekend. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. <laughs>